weeks ago, the Florida Gators were reeling. They had lost three out of four games and were in danger of dropping out of the SEC championship picture. Since that time, Florida has won three out of four. And tonight, they stand not only just a half game out of first place in the conference, but on the verge of their second straight 21 season as the Gators host the Tennessee Volunteers tonight from the O'Connell Center on Cox Cable 8 Sports. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ken Tomash, along with Mark Daniels to bring you tonight's game. And Mark, as we head into the final week and a half of the conference race, the schedule would seem to favor Florida as they have three of their four games remaining right here in the O'Connell Center. And it's always tough for any team to come into the O'Connell Center and take on the Gators. Tennessee comes in here tonight, and Vanderbilt will be in here next Wednesday. And while Vanderbilt will top the SEC standings with Kentucky, anybody that comes into the O'Connell Center expects a tough ball game. And as you said, Alabama after that, and then the Gators wrap the season up on the road at LSU. So the Gators tough at home, really sit in good position to stay in this SEC race down the stretch. Now this Tennessee team has lost four of its last five, and, and it's a different Tennessee team than in years past. Now the guard Tony White is gone, and Tennessee's loss as a team has been Dyra Nix's gain. He has really come into his own since White has left. Dyra Nix has just been outstanding for Tennessee this year. He's last year averaged just over 14 points a game. Now Nix has turned things around. He leads the conference in scoring, uh, averaging 21.8 points a game. And while Tony White was Mr. Tennessee last year in basketball, Dyra Nix has filled in offensively for the Volunteers very well this year. Don DeVoe tonight will be going for his 300th win as a collegiate head coach, head man of the Volunteers in his 17th season. But, Mark, there are some who say he may not win too many more games at Tennessee because he may be gone after two losing seasons well, last year and the year before and a disappointing for some 13-10 season this year. Well, they say he's on the hot seat right now. A couple of losing seasons up in Knoxville. And this year, as you said, 13-10. and 10. Folks disappointed up there. They expected more from this Tennessee club. But at 13-10 and 10 in a position, perhaps to get into some postseason action, NIT or something, and make things happen in the SEC. But there is talk that he is on the hot seat right now. And folks a little disappointed in their 13 and 10 play. One of the keys to this game, I think, will be the inside matchup. And a key player tonight may be Florida center Dwayne Shinsis against Doug Roth, the junior center from Tennessee. Last year in this game here in the O'Connell Center, Doug Roth had career highs of 27 points and 13 rebounds. But Dwayne Shinsis has really been playing well of late. Well, Shinsis has been playing well of late. He comes in tonight with a double figure streak of his own, like Vernon Maxwell has got 100. Shinsis is hitting double figures in 12 straight games. And when you Talk about the matchup between Shinsis and Roth. You, you take a look back at the first meeting between these two teams in Knoxville where Shinsis just owned Jeff Roth. Dwayne had 17 points, while Roth had just two. So Tennessee and Florida from the O'Connell Center. The team's clearing the floor for warm-ups, and we'll take a look at the starting lineups. The Volunteers of Tennessee, who come in, as we said, 13 and 10 overall, 6 and 8, and in sixth place in the Southeastern Conference. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As we take a look at the SEC standings, you see Kentucky and Vanderbilt on top 10 and 5. Tennessee, of course, has lost four of their last five, but their only victory last week, the upset of Kentucky, really helped Florida. It was a big win for Tennessee, and as you said, it helps the Gators because it gave Kentucky their fifth loss, which keeps Florida exactly tied in the loss column. Florida just a half game back of Kentucky and Vanderbilt as far as wins go, but a big win for Tennessee hitting the last second shot of the buzzer, getting a 72 to 70 win. Here you see Dyron Nix at one forward. Mark Griffin, 6'8", junior out of Union City, Tennessee, is the other forward. There's Doug Roth, the 6'11", junior out of Knoxville, Tennessee. They start freshman guard Clarence. Oh, Greg Bell, I'm sorry. Freshman out of London, West Virginia, starts at one guard. And a junior college transfer from Connors State College in Warner, Oklahoma, Clarence Swearingen. Averaging just under eight points a game is the other man in the backcourt for the Volunteers. For the Gators, a familiar starting five, one they've gone with in recent games. At one forward, Livingston Chapman seems to be back in his early season form after the knee surgery. Chris Capers, who filled in well for Chapman while Livingston was out with the knee problems, still in there for his defense and rebounding. Dwayne Shinsis, as we said, uh, will be a key matchup between him and Jeff Roth tonight. In the backcourt, the playmaker, double O, Ronnie Montgomery, who's been scoring better of late, now up to 6.6 .6 points a game. And Vernon Maxwell, working on a streak of 100 games in double figures. Needs 21 points tonight to become the third all-time leading scorer in Southeastern Conference history. Norm Sloan, of course, won his 600th game of his career earlier this month. 
goes for number 603 tonight. The Gators 11-1 at home this season, as we said. They're tough here. Tennessee has won just one road game in the conference. One and six. So we're about set to go from the O'Connell Center. Kind of a sparser crowd than you might have imagined for a midweek game. Spring break isn't until next week. It appears that some people have left early. This is, to be quite honest, kind of a disappointing crowd if you're used to Florida crowds of the last year or two. So we're underway, and Bell controls the tap for Tennessee. And the Gators will come out playing man-to-man. -man. This is Swearing in the junior college transfer running the point. And Bell will try for three. No good, but Tennessee controls it with Swearingen. Tennessee doing a lot of standing around. They're moving the basketball, but not their feet, as Dyer Nix can't get it. Scramble for the rebound, and Chapman comes up with it for Florida. And the balls will play man-to-man. -man. Shins is playing up high, gets it inside to Chapman. Shins has tried to go around Roth, and they called him for traveling. So no score. We're just underway from the O'Connell Center, Florida and Tennessee. The Volunteers looking to play spoiler, Florida. The Gators are staying in the SEC press. race. Trapping defense by Florida. Tennessee gets the ball out of there. Griffin can shoot from out there, and he cans this one. The ball's on the board first. Griffin, an outstanding outside shooter for a big man. He's 6'8". Florida working with Jeff Roth on Dwayne Shinses. Maxwell misses the shot, and Bell rebounds for Tennessee. Both teams came out man-to-man, -man, and now the second time down the court, both teams fall back into his own defense. Steal by Montgomery. Two on two. He blew it. Good play by Greg Bell to get in there and steal that pass. Kind of a slow start to this game. Balls lead at 2-0, 17-40 to play first half. Crowd screaming that the balls didn't get the ball across the timeline in 10 seconds. They might not have. Bell for three. Griffin kicks it back out to Swearingen. Florida on the season is being out-rebounded, 38-37. to 37. Laval's doing a good job there, but Maxwell makes the steal. Three minutes into the game, Florida has yet to score. Montgomery looking for help finds Capers. Good ball movement by Florida. From 15, Chapman hits. Game tied at two now. 16.40 to play first half as Livingston Chapman It's his first bucket of the night. Chris Capers draws the task of guarding Dyra Nix for the moment. Ball's doing a good job of finding the open man. Swearing and drives, but Shinsis rejects it. And here comes Florida running the court. Yeah. 
Now we'll see Shinsis on Raw. Back shot, yes. And the big guy took it right to Raw Thurway, just as he did back up in Knoxville, and Shinsis gets the Gators up 4-2. First points of the night for Shinsis. Florida pressing at half court and dropping back. Griffin again from the outside for three. For three points. He has scored all of Tennessee's five points on two field goals. It's 5-4 balls. Nix is on Chapman. Drives around a pick by Shinsis. And now gets it to Shinsis underneath. Maxwell walked with the basketball, but they'll call a foul on Clarence Swearingen as he drove the paint. Foul is on number 11, Clarence Swearingen, his first. Not a shooting foul. Florida will take the ball out underneath. They trail Tennessee 5-4. to four. Ken Tomash and Mark Daniels with you from the O'Connell Center on Cox Cable Channel 8 Sports. As Vernon Maxwell hits. Maxwell. Little baseline jumper puts Florida up 6-5. Balls get it into Roth for the first time. He can't get the shot to go. Capers rebounds for Florida. Shins is driving. The little hook is good. Looks like Shinsis has come to play tonight. He's it's a hook shot for Dwayne. Then he gets it going four points early, and he's doing it to Roth inside. Roth, as we said, only two points against Florida in the game up in Knoxville after a 27-point outing in this game last year here. Nick spins and misses everything. Bell rebounds and finally dumps it off to Roth for the easy deuce. Roth seemed to be the most surprised man in the building that he had the basketball. Florida getting good ball movement here on the Tennessee man-to-man. -man. Maxwell misses everything and Roth pulls it down. Clarence Swearingen running the point for Tennessee, the junior college transfer from Oklahoma. They get it to him from 18. Nothing but net. Tennessee leads at 9-8, 13-23 to play first half. Maxwell driving around the baseline looking for Chapman. Head fake and from 16, no good. Roth rebounds. Florida had nobody weak side. Clifford Lent and Dwayne Davis, as well as Pat Lawrence, getting set to check in for Florida. Swearingen drives and misses off the glass. Shinsis kicks it out to Maxwell. Maxwell one on three. Offensive foul on Berman. They'll call a charge on Vernon and say Greg Bell was in position. Looked like a pretty good call. You talked about the uh, nobody for the offensive rebound of the Gators' side. And just like you said that, Wayne Davis gets set to check in for the Gators. I think, Mark, more than the offensive foul, what Norm Sloan doesn't like is the fact that Vernon Maxwell was a little out of control coming down one on three against Tennessee. That's not a picture-perfect fast break, even if it is Vernon Maxwell leading it. It's, a, it's been a problem for Vernon. He's gotten off to a couple of shaky starts, and he admits he's been playing out of control a little bit. And uh, he's the first one to admit that he needs to calm his game down and just get started off to a good start. And the guy that's gotten off to a good start, which is always the key to Florida's game, is Dwayne Chintz is out early with four points. And playing aggressive inside on a guy who really took him to school last year with 27 points and 13 rebounds in this game. Dwayne showing that he's not going to be intimidated early. But Tennessee leads it 9-8, 13-01 to play in the first half. Florida, as we said, at 9-5 and five and in second place in the conference. Needs a win here tonight. Kentucky is playing host to LSU tonight. An important game. The Bayou Bengals could help Florida a lot by beating Kentucky. Though Florida would win any tiebreaker with Kentucky by virtue of the fact that they've beaten the Wildcats twice. So they have that in their favor. Vanderbilt coming in next Wednesday night. Florida really needs to win that one because of the pasting they took up in Nashville. 
Early stats for the Gators. Florida 4 of 7 from the floor, shooting 57%. For Tennessee, 4 of 11. And the Volunteers hitting on 36% of their shots. Tennessee out rebounding Florida early by a margin of 6 to 4. Don DeVoe's Volunteers, 13 and 10 coming in. 6 and 8 in the conference. There was a time in the early part of this decade when 20 wins was the accepted norm at Tennessee. They've fallen on hard times of late. And that man, Don DeVoe, may feel the pressure because of it. We're back to action now as the Volunteers push the ball up court. Florida playing a hustling defense. Get outside to Griffin from 20. And Florida comes up with it. Ronnie Montgomery will run the break. Clifford Lett now in at a guard. Capers and Montgomery, the only starters still in the game. Montgomery forces a shot and Nick's rebounds. Now it's Roth on Davis. He turns and hits. Roth with a size advantage over the 6'7". Davis took advantage of it that time. Clifford Lett drives the paint. Gets up, we'll have a foul on Swearing, and that would be his second. As Clifford Lett went in for the shot. And Vernon Maxwell checks back in. Travis Henry getting set to come in for Tennessee. Vernon Maxwell returns for the 6'3 junior out of Knoxville. And here comes Wendell Jenkins off the Florida bench for Ronnie Montgomery. In our last game, Mark, we saw Clifford Lett playing some point guard to give Ronnie Montgomery a rest. Now we'll see Wendell Jenkins as Lett will move to the off guard. And Maxwell is in as well, so Florida going with three guards. And now. Short Florida team in there now. Capers at 6'8", and Davis at 6'7", are the biggest of the bunch. We've got another foul inside as Chris Capers tried to drive the paint. Dyra Nix can't believe it. But he's going to get called for it, his first and the third on the Volunteers. He said it's a short Gator basketball team, but one thing it is, it's a quick team on the court for Florida right now, especially with Jenkins. And now Chapman comes back in, a little more board strength, without losing too much quickness, as the Gators take the ball out under the basket. Maxwell from 18, hands it. Three-pointer. Five points for Maxwell, we're tied at 11. Travis Henry trying to get the ball across the timeline. They get it to Roth, and its ball is stripped by Florida. Chapman looking for help, finds Wendell Jenkins. Now Maxwell will pull up, hits the shot, and he's fouled. They're going to call that one on Greg Bell, who got Maxwell in the shot. Vernon proven he can stay airborne for a while. The contact made with Maxwell in the air, and on his way down, Vernon releases it and gets the basket to fall, and now a chance to convert the three-point play for the Gators. Four fouls on the Volunteers, just one for Florida. Max with a chance to make it a three-point game, he does. 14 to 11, Florida. 11-16 to play, first half. Again, Florida doing a good job of pressure in the ball. Then dropping back. Wendell Jenkins playing tough on Travis Henry. Bell on Maxwell on the right side. Travis Henry diving the elbows a little bit, gets it off to Doug Roth, who misses the dunk, but he's fouled by Chris Capers. So Doug Roth will go to the line, shooting two. He is only a 55% free throw shooter, has only gone to the line 29 times this year. But he cans this one. 14 to 12, Florida leads. So 
So Doug Roth gets two for two, and it's a 14-13 game. Florida leading 10-55 to play first half as Wendell Jenkins brings it up. Maxwell pulls up and misses. Max can't get it to go. Shinses can't get the rebound, and we'll have a foul inside as Livingston Chapman and Travis Henry went for it. They'll call the foul on Henry. Chapman had the position that time, and Henry came down and made the contact in the body. Now Ronnie Montgomery will check back in for Florida. As Florida will take the ball out underneath. The starting five back out for Florida. Into Shinses. Gets the little hook shot to go. Six points for Dwayne. 16-13 Florida leading. Ten and a half minutes to play first half. The ball's thrown away. Shinses off to Maxwell. Griffin gets in front of it, but off to Montgomery. Now Maxwell can't get it to go. But we'll have a foul inside on Jeff on Doug Roth. Roth contact with Maxwell as Max went up for the shot. And Chris Davis now will check in for Tennessee. A walk-on out of Richmond Hill, Georgia. A 5'11 sophomore guard. I think what the call that time was, Ken Vernon missed the layup. Ronnie Montgomery had the position on the rebound, and it was Roth that made the contact on Montgomery. Now Roth and Schintz is going at it again. They get it inside to Capers in front of Griffin. Throws up a shot, does not go, but will have a foul on Griffin. So Tennessee already seven team fouls just halfway through the first half. Chris Capers at the line, shooting two. But Chris Capers at the free throw line has been no bargain either this year. 32% from the line has a chance here to give Florida a five point lead if he can hit both of them. Right. Nothing but net. First points of the night for Capers. He came in averaging just under four. Gets both of them nothing but net. And Florida's lead is now five, 18 to 13, 10 09 to play first half. The Falls do get it across the timeline. And Davis will run the point. Shins is playing behind Roth underneath. And they get it to Bell. He pulls up. And it's tapped in by Roth. He was going for the offensive rebound, glanced off his hands and into the bucket. Tennessee trails 18-15 now. Shinsis from 17. Oh, man. Mark, this is a matchup of two of the SEC's better outside shooting centers. We saw Doug Roth hit a couple of three-pointers in this game here last year. Two big men who can really shoot from the outside well. And Dwayne Roth has it outside can, the three-point line now. And Dwayne proving he can take the ball from the outside. Eight points ready for Schintz's. And he's already done it inside earlier, as we've seen. Florida's lead is five, 20 to 15. 9.08 to play first half. Now Mark Griffin out on top. Looking for Dyra Nix inside, but Capers doing a good job on him. They'll call a foul on Dwayne Schintz's as Tennessee got the ball into Doug Roth. So both big men with one foul apiece as we take a timeout. We've got nine minutes to play in the first half. Florida up by five. Shins is playing well against Jeff Roth. He's got eight points already. Maxwell has six. Check that seven. Chapman with a pair for Tennessee. Doug Roth has eight points already, eight of their 15. Tennessee trying to get Don DeVoe his 300th career win. Norm Sloan got his 600th against Mississippi State a couple weeks back. Looking for 603 now, and Florida looking to stay in the SEC title hunt with just four games remaining in the conference schedule, three of them right here in the O'Connell Center. Gators also in search of 
win number 20 of the season, which would be their second consecutive season with uh, 20 wins. And the first time a Florida team has ever done that. It would be only the third time in history a Florida team had won 20 games. You get the feeling that that's going to be kind of an accepted or an expected number around these parts in the coming years. 20 wins two years in a row, and pretty soon they're going to be awful disappointed if you don't win 20. Florida in pretty good shape to, for another NCAA tournament berth. Chance for 20 wins here. Could pick up another couple more before bids go out. Right now they lead Tennessee. Norm Sloan's club up by five, 20 to 15, nine minutes to play in the first half. Tennessee has Chris Davis, Greg Bell, Doug Roth, Dyron Nix, and Mark Griffin in the game. Florida has the five who started. Good defense by Chapman. Roth spins from 14, no good. Shinsis rebound. Inside to Chapman off the glass. Won't go, but he gets a rebound, puts it up. It doesn't go, but he draws the foul. Good also by Chapman. Gets his own rebound and puts it back up and draws the foul. And a chance to shoot two at the line right now and move the game lead up to seven. So Griffin picks up the foul. As Dwayne Davis comes in for Florida. Livingston Chapman going to the line where he's a 68% free throw shooter. Chance to extend the Florida lead from five to seven. Florida has not missed a free throw tonight. It came in as the 10th team in the conference in free throw shooting, dead last, 65%. Chapman hits two for two. And Florida leads by seven now, 22-15, eight and a half to play in the first half. Lane wide open for Bell. He glides in but misses the shot and Shinsis rebounds. Kicks it out to Maxwell. Three on two break. Off to Chapman. Great pass by Montgomery to Livingston Chapman for the deuce. Great pass for Ronnie Montgomery and Don DeVoe says, hey, we got to take a timeout and talk things over. The Gators dominating the boards early and also just getting started on the fast break. And I think one thing that's working tonight for Florida is they're working with the same pressing defense it did against Kentucky. And it'll get the turnovers at time for you. And what it did against Kentucky, it frustrated the Kentucky offense. And the Wildcats couldn't run as much and uh, slows things on a bit and allows the Gator defense to get back. So Florida doing the job of the boards and starting the break right there. Ronnie Montgomery, nice pass over to Livingston Chapman. And the Gators up by nine. Tennessee hurting from missing one of their leading scorers, Elvin Brown, who was averaging just under 10 points a game out of a forward spot. He was suspended from the team for disciplinary reasons. They have missed him. They missed Tony White, to be honest, even though Dyron Nix has jacked his game up several levels, but they do miss Tony White's scoring punch after Nix at 21-8 a game. Only Greg Bell at the guard spot is averaging over 10 points a game for the Volunteers, 11.4. Uh, something a little parochial to me. Two years ago, uh, we were hit with home porting. Uh, is is very, very controversial. And every dollar for home... So Came in just 13 and 10 and a sixth place standing in the SEC at six and eight. Tennessee gonna go with its starters again, the five who started the game. They really don't have that, that deep a bench. There's so one thing that's gonna come down in Florida's favor in this game is that they're a much deeper team. So with Tennessee already with seven team fouls in the half, they get some guys in foul trouble and have to go too deep on that bench. It's going to be an advantage for Florida. Almost a steal by Montgomery, but Roth gets it back. Montgomery's had quick hands, almost forced a couple of turnovers thus far in the game. 
Swearingen drives. It's pinned to the board by Davis and Shinsis. This will give them each half a block shot on that one. Gators lead by nine, 7.45 to play first half. Shinsis to Chapman cutting across the lane. He missed the shot. Battle for it. Chapman comes down with it. We'll have a foul. They'll call it on Mark Griffin, and it'll be his second. Great the hustle and determination by Livingston Chapman. Just a great job by Chapman of the entire Gator front line. And the missed shot, everybody crashed to the board, and Chapman smacking the ball out a bit before he picks up the ball and draws the foul from the Tennessee player, and they'll go to the line, and a chance to add a couple of more points onto the scoreboard. Chapman will have a one-and-one one now. He really can do it all. Shoot from the outside, drive to the inside, rebound. He misses the free throw. Davis, though, keeps it alive. Dishes off to Maxwell, who drives and puts one up and in. Ten points for Vernon Maxwell. That is game number 101 in his double-figure scoring streak. And he has Florida off to an 11-point lead now, 26-15. Swearingen and Bell, the guards for Tennessee. Maxwell is on Bell on the right side. Roth out high, kicks it to Griffin. They get it inside to Dyra Nix. Nix misses everything. Bell rebounds and puts it in. Surprising thing so far, Mark. Dyra Nix has yet to score. He usually plays very well against Florida. Maxwell looking for a pick from Shinses. Can't get it, but drives around Swearingen and puts one up. No good. Knicks rebounds. Six and a half minutes to play first half. Florida 26, Tennessee 17 from the O'Connell Center. They get it into Knicks. Loses the handle on it. And Dwayne Davis comes up with it. Again, the Gator front line of Shinses and Davis causing problems for Knicks. And Roth down low and Tennessee having problems. Going to stay in the man-to-man. -man. Shinsis from just inside the three-point line. Nothing but net. He is on tonight. Ten points, and his double-figure streak continues. It's the second time Dwight's pulled up from 18 tonight, forcing Doug Roth to come on out and play defense at a spot Roth's not used to. Crowd thought Bell traveled with it. He gave it up. Montgomery running it. They've only got a two-on-three. Montgomery will pull back and set up the offense. Maxwell losing the handle on the ball gets it to Chapman he'll pull up from 16 Florida's on a run leading now by 13 30 to 17 five and a half minutes to play first half Tennessee looking flustered Dyer Nix trying to drive on Shinsis pulls up and misses again Roth taps can't get it Montgomery two on one Swearingen's the one they're gonna call foul on someone I can't tell I think it's going to be a Montgomery. Ronnie with the offensive foul. I was watching Tennessee work out here last night, Mark, and one thing that Don DeVoe was stressing to his troops was the importance of getting back in a hurry on defense. He was very concerned about the Florida break, as many teams are in the conference. They worked for about... 20, 25 minutes just on getting back on defense on the Florida break. Well, the Florida man to man causing Tennessee a lot of problems tonight. Montgomery doing a good job of hawking the ball. Griffin from three doesn't, kicks it into Lockhart. Lockhart's over Shinsis. Lockhart. Lockhart's first game, first points off the bench. 6'7 sophomore from Nassau in the Bahamas. And now he gets the task of guarding Shinsis as Dwayne is up high. In the post, that one off Capers' hands. Maxwell gets it outside the three-point line. Shinsis turns on Lockhart and puts it in. Twelve points for the big fella. Florida's 13-point lead, 32-19. Four and a half to play first half. Bell in the lane. This is off to Lockhart, falling back. Capers grabs the ball out of the air. Off to Chapman. Chapman puts it in in front of Lockhart. The Gators starting to run, and it's causing Tennessee some problems. Florida with a tough zone pressing defense is forcing the turnovers, and the Gators now up by 15 with four minutes to go in the first half. They're doing it on both ends, offensively and there defensively, as Chapman comes up with the steal. Pass ahead to Capers. Off the glass, can't get it to go. Griffin rebounds. Oh, 
Don DeVoe trying to get his troops to settle down. Nick spins. Grabs it again and sticks it back up and off the glass for his first points of the night. Led the conference in rebounding a year ago. Does it on the offensive and defensive glass. We're under three and a half to play now. Florida's lead back to 13. Schintz is on Lockhart. Now Maxwell for three. No good, but Griffin in good position for the rebound. Florida sticking with the man-to-man. -man. Maxwell comes out on Greg Bell. Alley-oop to Dyer Nix. Finally sets himself and puts it in. Four points for Nix. And the Fort Walton Beach Junior starting to get juiced up early, and the Gators really need to contain Nix. Florida lead 11 now with 2.50 to go. On the other hand, Tennessee really needs to go to Nix if they're going to cut into this lead. Maxwell into Shinsis. Dwayne, nice pass to Chapman. Can't get it to go. It's swatted out of bounds by Shinsis. It'll go to Tennessee. And Norm Sloan calls for a table for four, please, as Patrick Aaron, Dwayne Davis, Wendell Jenkins, and Clifford Lett check in for Florida. Don DeVoe has only played seven players tonight. The five who started, and Ian Lockhart and Chris Davis. Here's a steal by Jenkins. Off to Lett. Florida again forcing a turnover. And Wendell Jenkins, one of the break with Clifford Lett. The Gators now up by 13 again. Nix pulls up from 17 and cans it. He's got six points in the last couple minutes or so. He knows he's got to turn it on if Tennessee is going to have a chance. Two minutes to play, first half now. 36-25, Florida. Florida with its three-guard lineup in again. Dwayne Davis fights for that one. Curls it across the court and out of bounds over by the cheerleaders. And now Florida pressing in the backcourt. Trying to force some more turnovers on a what is basically a shell-shocked Tennessee team right about now. That one went out of bounds. They'll give it to Florida. I tell you, the press has been so successful for the Gators tonight. Tennessee just hasn't been able to get the offense going. As it turns out, Florida up by 11 and a crowd favorite and Kenny McClary checking into the ball game. As the crowd goes nuts here at the O'Connell Center. Pretty good crowd now. Some were late arriving. But they're loving it now. 135 to play first half. Florida up by 11. Inside Kenny McClary, who has checked in. Here's Dwayne Davis in the slam. Now they're really going nuts in Gainesville. Still pressing the ball in the backcourt. Tough man-to-man -to -man defense by Florida. Tennessee doesn't know what to do. If it was a late arriving crowd that was quiet, Dwayne Davis just woke the house up with a dunk. Under a minute to play now. Florida by 13. Clifford Lett fouled Ian Lockhart. Ball's got it into Lockhart. And Lett got him on the hand. Only the fifth team foul for Florida, though. So Tennessee will not shoot. Florida has been in the bonus for quite some time. They get it to Nix. He spins in the paint. The little one-hander goes with a little help from the glass, and we've got a foul on Wendell Jenkins. Sally Dyer Nix, who was held scoreless for the first about 14 minutes of this ball game, has hit the last eight points for Tennessee. That time he drew the foul and a chance to get his ninth point and cut the lead to 10. It's 38-27, Florida. 47 seconds to play in the first half. As you look at Travis Henry, who has checked back into the volunteer lineup. Nick's a 77% free throw shooter. Gets that one off the rim in the glass. It's now a 10-point lead, 38-28, and Nick's has nine.
Right. Here's where Florida has to be patient on offense. They've got to score. Letting Bell got tangled up with it. They'll call a foul on Bell. It's going to be his second. Tennessee trying to get the turnover to try and cut that lead inside uh, double digit mark. This is the first half coming second. towards a close now with 29 seconds left. You got to feel that Don DeVoe probably thinks if he can go into the locker room down less than 10 points, they'd be doing pretty well considering they were down by 15 at one point. But thanks to Dyron Nix, they're making a pretty good run at it here in the latter stages of the first half. As Ron Housley checks in for Tennessee, 6'4", senior out of Marion, North Carolina, who, by the way, is a distant cousin of Brad Doherty, who used to play for North Carolina, and now the Cleveland Cavaliers. As Clifford Lett hits the first of two free throws to put Florida back up by 11, a chance to make it by 12. Doesn't go, but Florida rebounds. 27 seconds to go in the half. Let just inside the three-point stripe. Won't go. Aaron can't get the rebound. Housley controls for Tennessee. And now the Vols will push it up the floor. Chance to get the last shot and get it inside 10. Four seconds. Nix gets it to go as the first half comes to a close. Dyer and Nix putting on a show in the latter stages of the first half in Tennessee after trailing by 15 at one point has made it a nine point game 39 to 30 Florida leads it and you got to figure that Norm Sloan has to be pretty happy with what he saw in the first half of the first half hustling defense good shooting good inside play by Dwayne Shinsis good rebounding on the set on the other hand he's perhaps a little disappointed by the team may have let down a little bit with that big lead and allowed Tennessee and Dyer and Nix to pull back into it in the latter stages of the first half. Gators owned a 15-point lead, but on the positive things, you look at Dwayne Chintz is off to a great start, hitting the boards uh, and grabbing the boards, starting the break for the Gators, doing the job offensively. And as you said, the Florida pressing defense just super tonight, forcing the turnover. But yet you look at the scoreboard, and Tennessee has pulled back inside the double-digit mark, trailing by just nine in a hot hand, and Dyer and Nix coming back out in the second half. And I'm sure Coach Sloan will try and work on controlling Nix. And for Don DeVoe, he's got to come up with a way to try and beat the Gator press. To do that, he's going to have to get better guard play, I think. Greg Bell and Clarence Swearingen have just four points between them, the two starting guards for Tennessee. They've been getting most of their points out of Dyer Nix and Doug Roth. So it'll have to be better guard play by second half in Tennessee. Florida just needs to get back to doing what got them to that 15-point lead in the first half. So it's 39-30, Florida leading Tennessee at the half. We'll be back with the second half in just a bit. If you think the only thing winter brings is the cold, think again. HBO is hot this winter with blockbuster movies. The heat keeps building. You go ringside, center stage for concerts, and front row for great comedy. It's hot. It's a winter heat wave with HBO. The first name in copiers probably isn't the copier name you think of first. But it's a name that links speed and performance with uncompromising reliability and makes innovative technology simple to use. For meeting the needs of every size business, business relies on the most popular copiers in America. From personal to high-performance copiers, the choice is Canon. Call Southern Copy Products at 376-8058. We're back at the O'Connell Center. Ken Tomash and Mark Daniels with you as Florida leads Tennessee 39 to 30. But Mark, it could have been a lot more with four minutes to go. Florida was up by 15. And the hot guy for Tennessee was Dyra Nix, the SEC's leading scorer. Nix came in averaging 21.8 points a game and held scoreless for almost 17 minutes. And at the 339 mark of the first half, Nix hit his first point and then picked up 11 points in the final three minutes and 39 seconds. So Tennessee, as he said, down by 15. The Gators had everything in control, but suddenly Don DeBose's team crept back in and now just down by nine. And now Florida, I think, needs to get back to what got them to that 15-point lead, which was the hustling defense forcing the turnovers on Tennessee. Tennessee's new backcourt has really not 
played all that well. They do miss Tony White and Fred Jenkins, who are departed from the scene. So Tennessee trails by nine as we get set to start the second half. Scoring totals for you for Florida. Dwayne Shinsis led the Gators with 12 points. He's winning the battle right now of the matchup with him and Jeff Roth, and he's doing it both inside and outside, Mark, hitting from inside and outside. And that's the key thing for Dwayne, his outside shot. When it's on, unstoppable, and that's something that Dwayne has been successful. And also, if he scores early in the ballgame, which he's done tonight, he's been a force. Jensen's with 12 points, Roth with 8, another guy for Florida, Livingston Chapman, 8 uh, with uh, 10 points, and Chapman looks like he's back in the same form he was when the season started. There you look at Dyra Nix. As he's, we said, he had 11 points in those final 339 of the first half. Vernon Maxwell had 10 points also for Florida. Chris Capers with a pair. Ian Lockhart, two off the bench for Tennessee. Greg Bill, two. Clarence Swearingen with two. And Mark Griffin with five points for Tennessee. Dyer and Nix, their leading scorer in the first half. Pulled them back from a 34-19 deficit to this point where they trail by just nine. 39-30 as we're getting set to start the second half. Same five that started the game for Florida. Chapman, Capers, Maxwell, Shinsis, and Montgomery. I would imagine we'll see the same starting five from Tennessee. Don DeVoe has only used seven players tonight. We'll see Dyra Nix, Mark Griffin, Doug Roth, Greg Bell, and Clarence Swearingen to start the second half. The same five who started the game for Tennessee. So Florida getting the ball inbounds. We'll see what Tennessee does defensively on Florida. The ball's out on the man-to-man -man defense. Just how they started the ball game. Then they fall back into the zone. And then picked up man-to-man -man later in the first half. Florida doing a good job moving the ball. Getting it to Chapman. To Shinsis cutting in the post. Spins on Roth. Roth blocked the shot. I think he might have got a piece of Shinsis' hand. No call. He got a piece of both the ball and the hand on that. Tennessee now with the chance to cut the lead down to seven. First possession of the second half for the Volunteers. Swearingen driving. Tried to get too cute, laid off to Dyer and Nix. It was batted away. Florida controls. Tennessee hustling back on defense. Shins is spinning on Roth from 13. No rim luck. Dyer and Nix rebounds. Nix had four rebounds in the first half. By the league and rebounding a year ago, he's in the top five this season. And they get it into him, spinning on Shinsis, but he's tied up by Montgomery. Great defense by Florida, but they kick it out to Bell from three-point land. Can't get it to go. Roth tries to get the rebound. It goes off his hand. Florida ball. Dyer Nix looking for the foul inside, was sworn by Gator players, and Florida takes the ball as Roth knocks it out of bounds. Gator's up by nine. So it seems both Tennessee and Florida knows that Dyer Nix is going to be the key man for Tennessee. Tennessee trying to get on the ball. Florida trying to deny it. Great pass by Shinsis inside to Chapman. We'll have a foul in the lane. Super pass from Dwayne Shinsis. Excellent vision of the lane, and Chapman draws the foul. That'll be on Greg Bell, and it's his third. First foul of the half for Tennessee. Still 39-30, 18-37 to play second half. Maxwell misses and Bell falls to the floor as he grabs the rebound. No one has scored here yet in the second half. Played a minute and a half. Tennessee looking to cut the lead to seven. Florida playing zone. Nick's in the paint. Little one-handed move won't go. Chapman rebounds. Still scoreless. Ken, two minutes gone by already in the second half. Get it into Shinsis, and he spins on Roth. Again, can't get it to go. Terrible rim luck for Dwayne Shinsis on his first two shots in the second half. Florida back in the zone, collapsing on Nix when he gets the ball. That didn't stop him that time. Nix's 13th point of the ball game. Nice shot by Nix. Every time he touches the ball, two, three Gators on him, but he pulls up for the turnaround jump shot. Now at 13, leading the Volunteers, who now pull within seven. 17-20 to play in the game. 
Nix with a steal. Two on one, Nix all alone for the slam. And it's a five point game. 17.06 to play in the game, 39 34. Florida has not scored. We're three minutes into the second half. Dyra Nix, 15 of Tennessee's last 17 points. Montgomery drives for Shinsis for the slam. They caught Tennessee and Doug Roth sleeping. Great pass from Ronnie Montgomery to Shinsis for the easy two points. And the Gators again now back in that trapping zone defense. Dwayne Davis getting set to check in as Nix is going to take this thing on himself. Capers rebounds off the missed shot. Tennessee really needs Darren Nix to play well in the second half, but he can't do it alone. He's got to get some help. Chapman from 19, nothing but net. His feet were on the line. It's for two. 43-34, Florida by nine. And now Florida pick it up in the backcourt again. Mark Griffin doesn't want to dribble the ball in the backcourt, and you can't blame him. They didn't get the ball over in 10 seconds. Now Florida's back in that hustling defense that forced the turnovers in the first half and got them to a 15-point lead. The Gator defense, as you said, forced the turnover. The debate going on right now, I believe they're going to say that the Gators might have touched the ball before it head back into the backcourt. So we'll wait and see what the referee's decision is. And it stands, a 10-second violation. Norm Sloan is happy as Florida gets the ball. Dwayne Davis will check in off the Florida bench. Dwayne Shinsis will get a breather. So now it'll be Roth on Dwayne Davis. Let's see if the volunteers, when they get the ball back, try to go into Roth to take advantage of the size advantage he has on Davis. Maxwell, baseline. In and out. Davis tips it up. Griffin rebounds. Now Roth sets a screen for Griffin, who can't get it to go. Dyer and Nix flying, can't get the rebound. One on one. Maxwell pulls up for three, and it bounces out. Got to check that rim, Mark. Lob pass to Dyer and Nix, and he's going to throw it away. Backcourt violation. Started to say, Mark, you might want to check that rim to see if it's really 18 inches in diameter because Florida's having a real trouble. They're getting the shots. They just can't get it to go in. He's about four or five of just banged iron and popped in and out. Pat Lawrence checks back in for the Gators as Livingston Chapman will sit down. Pat has seen limited action tonight. Still mired in a shooting slump. Get it to Capers down low and now kick it back out to Maxwell. Pretty good defense by Tennessee as Ron Housley has checked in. He's on Montgomery. Montgomery driving, looking for the open man. Spots Davis underneath, kicks it back out to Montgomery. And Montgomery stepped on the line. Good defense by Ron Housley on the baseline. Excellent defense by Tennessee. Don DeVos team now playing a tougher man-to-man. -to -man. On the timeout, Gators up by nine as uh, Tennessee staying close in this ballgame. And Ian Lockhart set to check in off the Tennessee bench. Just a reminder. The next game we'll have for you here on Cox Gibbelate Sports next Wednesday night as the Commodores of Vanderbilt and Will Purdue and Barry Goheen and Scott Droud and Barry Booker invade the O'Connell Center. Remember the pasting the Commodores laid on Florida a month ago. Florida certainly remembers it. Will Purdue went to town at the Gators' expense. And with Vanderbilt currently tied for first place in the conference, it's a must-win game for Florida. Here they lead by nine, 15.05 to play in the game, 43-34 Florida. But Florida has gone back to what worked for them in the first half. They're playing good D. Tennessee, though, is getting the good shots, and they're playing good D as well, and Dyron Nix is kind of taking it on himself to bring Tennessee back. Well, proven why he's the SEC's leading scorer right now. Dyron Nix with the hot hand. He's the reason why Tennessee has stayed close in this ball game. The Volunteers now will play the tough man-to-man -to -man defense. The Gators staying in that trapping zone, which is forced to turnovers tonight. And for Florida, the hot hands is Dwayne Shinsis and Livingston Chapman, who've been hitting from all over the place, both inside and outside. Chapman now with 12 points. 14 for Dwayne Shinsis. The 13th straight game he has scored in double figures. He'll have a ways to go to catch Vernon Maxwell, though, who has, with 10 points so far tonight, 
is in double figures for the 101st straight game. Chapman's back into the Florida lineup. With Dwayne Davis and Chapman are the forwards. Shins is back at center and Montgomery and Maxwell. Getting a lot of play at guard tonight. We've seen some of Ronnie Montgomery, or rather some Wendell Jenkins and some Clifford let off the Florida bench. But for the most part, it's been Montgomery and Maxwell. Now Florida will trap in the backcourt again. We'll get it to Nix. He'll pull up from 15. Dyron, Nix. And he buries it to make it a seven-point game. Florida 43, Tennessee 36, 14, 45 to play. Shintzis out on the high post. Into Davis lob pass on Griffin for the slam. Dwayne Davis becoming a Gator human highlight film himself here. Davis with four points tonight. All four of those points coming on a couple of dunks. He's got a complete package as a player. He's got quickness. He can rebound. He can shoot the ball. And now Tennessee back down by nine as Nick spins on Davis and Shintzis, but Chapman rebounds. And we'll have a foul, I believe, on Doug Griffin underneath. Mark Griffin as Chris Capers checks back in for Florida. It's got to be Griffin's third. Chapman with the position on the rebound. And Florida up by nine. Chance to get it back into double figures as Chris Capers checks back in for Dwayne Davis. And they'll call a foul on Ian Lockhart, so it's his first. So Mark Griffin is saved a third foul for the moment. Doug Roth on the Tennessee bench. So Ian Lockhart now guarding Dwayne Shinsis again as we've got a whistle underneath. Be a foul away from the ball on Clarence Swearingen. Now that's his third. So he is in trouble with 14.06 to play in the game and Tennessee trailing by nine. Into Capers off Griffin. Capers looking, found Chapman cutting through the lane and Nick's fouled him. Good pass from Chris Capers finding Chapman as he breaks towards the basket. Nick's a step behind Livingston and commits the foul. It's the third team foul on Tennessee and it's uh, the second foul on Dyra Nix. Well, now they call the foul on Housley as Maxwell leans in and can't get it to go. So Nix spared the expense of the foul. Give it to Housley, his first. Nix still has one. The balls have four. Florida yet to commit a foul. As they fall back on defense. Housley and Swearingen in the guards. To Nix. Florida collapses on him. He puts the shot up. No good. Chapman rebounds. Lockhart tried to make the steal, and Shinsis pulled up and missed the jumper. Swearingen rebounds for Tennessee, who trail by nine. 13-15 to play in the game. Don DeVoe pretty calm on the Tennessee sideline, sitting down, telling his troops to just hang in there, play it cool. Tennessee very patient of the ball right now. Down by nine, but very much in this ball game. Just under 13 minutes to go. The balls have stayed tough. Housley in a crowd. Out to Swearingen, top of the key. Gets it to Lockhart. Lockhart on Capers. They'll call a foul on Capers as Lockhart leaned in for the shot. Don DeBose said patience is going to be the key if Tennessee can pull on a victory tonight. That's what the volunteers are right now. Patient getting the high percentage shot. Lockhart draws the foul. Now at the free throw line with a chance to add two more to the volunteer scoreboard. Dwayne Shinsis checks out for the time being to a big hand from this Florida crowd. Don DeVoe will look on as Ian Lockhart will try to cut into the nine-point lead of Florida. He cans the first one. Sophomore from the Bahamas averaging 6.3 points a game off the volunteer bench. A 61% free throw shooter. Gets both of these here. And it's now a seven-point lead once again, 45-38. 12.40 to play in the game. Cross-court pass to Chapman, and Lockhart pinned it against the board, but we'll have a foul on Nix, and Chapman goes down, holding his hand, it appears. Great pass from Vernon Maxwell to Chapman, and as he went up, Nix caught him, and the foul was on Nix. That's his second foul, Livingston a bit shaken up. He was holding his hand. Looks like he might have jammed it as he came down. Wendell Jenkins will check in for Florida. Give Ronnie Montgomery a breather. 
Chapman now will shoot two. At the line, Livingston Chapman shooting two. Chapman clenching and unclenching that right hand, his shooting hand. As he'll go to the line, we'll see how much it affects his free throws. Well, he missed everything on that one. Livingston came in a 68% free throw shooter and not even close that time. And now Greg Bell comes back in off the Tennessee bench. Swearingen checks out. So does Housley. Now Housley just going over to talk with one of the assistant coaches. Chapman missed everything on his first free throw attempt as Dwayne Shinsis gets set to check back in for Florida. Chapman gets this one all net. And it's an eight-point lead. Florida 46, Tennessee 38. 12 and a half to play in the game. Gators 7 of 10 of the free throw line thus far, 70%. Wendell Jenkins doing a good job on Bell. Capers helping out on the defense. Florida pressuring the ball. Now they drop back. Mark Griffin, who has been quiet from the outside since hitting a couple early. Now they get it out top of the key to Swearingen. Into Nick's a crowd of Gators around him, and he walked with a basketball. That's just great defense by Florida on Nick's. Dyra Nick's one step too many, and every time Nick's is getting the ball anywhere near the basket, two, three Gators surrounding him. So Tennessee needs to get some good plays, some points out of some other people to kind of take the pressure off Nick's and make Florida guard some other people. Capers gets it to Jenkins. Shinsis Lockhart doing a good job in Shinsis' face, made him throw the pass away. Tennessee basketball, they trail by eight with 11.44 to play in the game as Ron Housley checks back in for Tennessee. Mark Griffin takes a seat. And Ken, it seems like the Gators have had control of this ball game throughout the entire contest. Yet Tennessee with a chance right now to cut the lead to six. So Florida will pick up again in the backcourt, doing a good job. Clifford Lett is on Bell, and now the Florida zone defense. Housley driving, collapsing defense on him, gets it to Lockhart, scramble for the ball underneath. Jenkins comes up with it. Florida, two on three. Davis driving. Missed the shot, but there'll be a foul underneath on Housley. Wendell Jenkins picking up the loose ball and running down with Dwayne Davis. And Davis doing what he does best, taking the ball with the hoop. Draws the contact and he'll hit the line. Livingston Chapman will check back in. Apparently his fingers aren't hurting him too badly. He was out for a brief spell. Now Swearingen checks out and Doug Roth comes back in for Tennessee as Dwayne Davis will go to the line to shoot two. Vernon Maxwell comes back in for Florida as well. And Dwayne Davis to the line, where he is a 42% free throw shooter. Misses that one off the front of the rim. Florida by eight, 46-38, 11-18 to play. And Davis puts him up by nine. Gators with the press again in the Tennessee backcourt, and they break the press easily. Roth pressure gets it to Nix from 15. He gets it to go. 19 points for Dyra Nix tonight, almost his average. Anytime Nix gets the ball anywhere around the basket, you know he's going to be putting it up. The Gators really need to contain him. Nobody else for Tennessee with the offensive productivity. Maxwell misses the shot, and Roth rebounds. He had position inside on Shinsis. Now Tennessee with a chance to cut it for to five for the first time since the nine and a half minute mark of the first half. Bell for three outside, in and out, but Roth tips it in with one hand. Ten points for Doug Roth tonight. 47-42, Florida leading. 10-22 to play in the game. Wendell Jenkins just inside the stripe, can't get it to go. It's tapped out of bounds. 
They're going to say it went off Dwayne Shinsis. I thought Doug Roth might have tapped it out of bounds, but it goes to Tennessee. The Volunteers down by five and have stayed close in this ball game. Dyer Nix has been the hot man, and Doug Roth gets the tip in on the basket before. And just like this, we got ourselves a close ball game as we come up with a 10-minute mark here in the second half. Roth with the ball, pressured by Davis. Needs to get rid of it and does to Swearingen. DeVoe calling for motion offense. From the Tennessee sideline, Nix. Underneath, they get it up top. Roth, way up high, outside the three-point stripe. Bell will try the three with Chapman in his face, and it goes. So Greg Bell, after only two points tonight, now has five, and it's 47-45 Florida. Nine and a half minutes to play. The Vols have cut it to two. Inside to Shinsis, who turns on Roth and can't get it to go again. Nix rebounds. Now Lockhart comes up with it and kicks it out to Greg Bell. Shinsis has struggled from the floor here in the second half. The shots, he's been getting the shots. They just haven't been able to fall. And Tennessee chance to tie. Bell for three. And it goes, and Tennessee has the lead. For the first time since the 11, check that, since the 12-minute mark of the first half, Tennessee leads it. They led at 9-8, but haven't led since. Montgomery driving right side. Davis, weak side, lays it in. Davis did a good job of getting inside. Dyra Nix. Florida back up on top, 49-48, eight and a half to play. Nix left side, driving. No good, Lockhart will be fouled by Shinsis. Norm Sloan, not a happy man as his Gators cannot let this one get away. Fouls on number 33, Dwayne Shinsis, his second team second. Now Shinsis will come out after committing the foul. Chris Capers checks back in for Florida. Ken Don DeVoe came into this one looking for career win number 300, and he's got to be pleased with the way his ball club would show by 15 at one point. Let's creep back in. This is on to one point lead, now just down by one to the Gators. And now they're getting some play out of some other folks. Greg Bell hit two three-pointers to get Tennessee back, taking some of the pressure off Dyra Nix. This is Swearingen outside to Bell, just inside the three-point stripe, lays it up no good, but Nix is there to slam it home and give Tennessee the lead again. 21 points for Dyra Nix. 50 to 49. Tennessee leads it exactly eight minutes to play in the game. Dyra Nix proven why he's the conference leading scorer at the right place at the right time. Great move by Montgomery as he takes it up in the trees and draws the foul on Greg Roth. Now they'll call it on Greg Bell. That's four on Bell. And Montgomery to the line where he is a 71% shooter. And now Housley checks back in to pick up Bell. Gator is 8 of 12 with a free throw line of the evening. And Montgomery, as you said, 71% free throw shooter in the line. And Roddy looking for his first points tonight. Came in averaging just under seven. Gets his first one there. We're tied at 50. Ken Tomash, Mark Daniels with you from the O'Connell Center on Cox Cable 8 Sports. Got a dandy here. Florida and Tennessee tied at 50, and Montgomery can't break the tie. But Capers rebounds, and Montgomery controls. Now chance for Florida to take the lead with 7.45 to play. Montgomery driving and looking. Chapman just inside the stripe. Can't get it to go, but Davis rebounds. Takes it up strong on Roth and puts it in. Dwayne Davis is only a freshman, but he's not afraid of anyone. Coming down the other end, Dyron Nix is fouled. Great play by Dwayne Davis, who battles inside to get the basket. And Tennessee comes right back with Dyron Nix down at the other end, and he's fouled by Vernon Maxwell. Nix heads back to the line, and he's been the offensive machine tonight for Tennessee with 21 points. Vernon Maxwell has not scored in the second half. Still 10 points. It's been kind of lost in the shuffle here tonight. Norm Sloan wants a timeout. He's not going to get one before Tennessee gets the ball inbounds, trailing just by two. 
Housley loses the ball, but they're going to call a foul, I believe, on Montgomery. Now they'll call it on Davis away from the basketball. Dwayne Davis, his first team fourth. So four team fouls now on Florida. Tennessee has seven. Florida will be in the bonus for the last 7-17. But they trail now only by two. Tennessee has been flat out playing Florida here in the first 13 minutes of the second half. Don, the most team doing exactly what they wanted to do. Patient on the offensive play. And on defense, they're playing a tough man-to-man -to -man defense. And the Gators have been getting the shots off, but haven't been able to make many fall. Uh, Dwayne Schintz has had a rough uh, second half with some shots hitting the rim. And Florida just up by two at one time owned a 15-point lead in Tennessee right in this thing. A big key has been Vernon Maxwell, who with 10 first-half points, as we said, has not scored here in the second half. Came in averaging 20 points a game. Has scored half that tonight. Knicks came in averaging 21.8 for Tennessee, and he has 21 as Tennessee has come back from a nine-point halftime deficit to now trail only by two. They took the lead. Not too long ago, and Florida and Tennessee have been battling back and forth ever since. Get a coach, Norm Sloan, talking to Livingston Chapman, trying to wake his team up. Florida's just kind of come out here in the second half and play Tennessee's ball game, and the Volunteers have crept back in it. Seven minutes and 17 seconds left. And the game is now just up by two, Kevin. So Ron Housley will go to the line for Tennessee. 50% free throw shooter this year. The senior out of Marion, North Carolina. Gets this one to cut it to one at 52-51. Don DeVoe looks on as Ron Housley set for the second shot. In and out, Capers rebounds. Montgomery controls for Florida. Tennessee doing a good job of defensing the ball. Looking for Chapman inside. Lockhart on him, kicks it back out to Montgomery. Montgomery with a shot. Won't go, but Davis grabs it, and now Doug Roth controls for Tennessee. They trail by one, 52-51, 6.43 to play in the game. Don DeVoe saying, slow it down, be patient. It's what's got us here in the second half. And I think it's worked for Tennessee right now. They got the confidence that they can stay in this ball game and a chance to win it. That's really all Don DeVoe wanted. I'm not going to call a foul on Montgomery as he reached in on Ian Lockhart. Foul is on double zero. Ronnie Montgomery, his second team fifth. We talked about Florida's problems from the field in the second half. The Gators just 5 of 17, shooting 29% from the floor. Tennessee, 8 of 17, 47%. Get it out to Roth, out high from three-point land. He will not shoot. Off to Swearingen. Now Roth on the right wing. Looking inside for somebody. Can't find one. Florida doing a good job inside. Swearingen to drive on Maxwell. Now he has to pull up short and dish off to Nix from 18. A little short. Chapman went up for it and unwittingly tipped it in. They'll give the basket to Lockhart. Ian Lockhart using Livingston Chapman. Maybe has a step out of there. Kind of... Jumped right over Livingston using the body a little bit. Now Tennessee up by one. Chapman on Roth and Nix. Yes. Score it and send Livingston Chapman to the line. Great inside move. Taking it up on the two biggest players out there right now for Tennessee. Roth and Dyron Nix. Roth's second foul. Florida leads by one. 54-53. 5.50 to play in the game. Chapman hits to put Florida up by two now, 55-53. Get it across the timeline to Doug Roth. Roth to Nix, top of the key. Roth for three. Up and over the backboard, Florida ball. Don DeVoe clapping, but I think that's the last thing he wanted from his big center and Doug Roth to take a three-point shot from out and bombs away land. But Get a crowd of 9,527 comes to life. Florida crowd into it now as the Gators get it inside to Shinsis and he throws it away. Tennessee ball. 
Another turnover for the Gators. Florida protected a two-point lead. Tennessee right in this thing with 5.20 to go. If Florida lets this one get away, they will never forgive themselves as Nix spins and hits. 23 points for Nix. 12 here in the second half. Maxwell for three. No good. Florida ice cold from the field in the second half. Gators in man-to-man -man defense right now. Montgomery on Housley. Capers has Nix. He blocks the shot. They're going to call a foul on Capers, and Chris can't believe it. Thought it was a good, good block by Capers. But it'll be his third foul. Davis will check back in for Chris Capers, who sits out with three fouls. Tyron Nix at the line. So Nix will go back to the line. Chance to break the tie in Tennessee's favor. Nix hits. 24 points for Nix tonight. Tennessee leads at 56-55. 4.49 to play in the game. Don DeVoe looking for his 300th win, and it would be a big one. Tipped in by Lockhart, but they're going to call, I believe, offensive interference on Lockhart. Got his hand over the rim before he gave the ball a chance to either stay in or come back out. Lockhart called for the goaltending, and the Gators down by one now. Florida with a chance to regain the lead. Call, call a foul on Lockhart. Call a foul on Lockhart, his second, and Florida will go to the other end to shoot one and one. That's the good news. The bad news is it's Dwayne Davis will be doing the shooting. One thing the Gators very good at, though, as far as the free throw line. Florida came in ranked 10th in the conference, but down the stretch, the Gators, one of the best free throw, free throw shooting teams in the conference in the last four, five minutes of the ball game. Davis misses that one. Tennessee still leads by one, 56-55, 4.40 to play in the game. Roth way out high up top. Shinsis has to come out to guard him. Lockhart off Lockhart. Chapman hits. Lockhart has eight points tonight. Florida trails by three, 58-55. Shintz is spinning on Roth. No good, Lockhart grabs it out of the air for Tennessee. Roth driving to the hoop. Block shot by Davis. Florida controls. Maxwell, one on three. Thinks better of it and pulls up. Good move by Maxwell. Now Florida sets the offense down by three. Shinsis, little hook shot, won't go, and I believe we'll have a foul on Raw. It's going to be the third foul on Doug Roth, and Shinsis goes back to the line. The Gators need to get the ball inside right now and get the play of uh, Shinsis back in it. Florida trailing by three with 3.59 left. Wayne Shinsis at the line, shooting two. Dwayne Shins is an outstanding free throw shooter once he gets there, 77%, but this is his first shot from the line tonight. Florida now down by two, 58-56, just under four minutes to play. Dwayne Shinsis hits two for two from the line. And it's a one-point game. Tennessee leading 58-57, 3.55 to play. The Gators in that tight man-to-man -man defense. Roth up top to Swearingen. Capers is the man on Dyron Nix underneath. Tennessee even more patient now. Davis tried to tap it away from Lockhart, got called for the foul. And now with both teams in the bonus, Lockhart will be going to the line. Dwayne got his hand in, got his hand inside just a little too bit and made contact with the body. And now Tennessee at the line is both teams shooting the bonus for the rest of the way. Ian Lockhart at the line, one and one. Lockhart hits a clutch free throw for Tennessee. Nine points for him off the bench tonight for Don DeVoe. As Livingston Chapman picks up Dwayne Davis. 
The Vols lead it by two, 59-57. Lockhart with a chance to make it a three-point game. He misses this one in Chapman, and Nick's fight for it. Chapman comes up with it. Off to Montgomery. Florida trails by two. That could turn out to be a big miss for Florida. Shinsa spins it off the glass and ties it at 59. That's the kind of play Florida's going to need. Get the ball inside. Dwayne Shinsa gets it. First big basket for him in a while. And it's all tied up at 59. Nix with Capers on and drives the baseline. Capers hacked him. All over Nix with the body. Fourth foul on Chris. Dyra Nixon, the line for Tennessee, came into this ballgame with a 77% free throw shooter. Dyra Nix at the line, shooting two. Norm Sloan not happy at all with the recent turn of events here in the second half. Crowd trying to rattle Dyra Nix. Nix quiets him by hitting the front end of the two shot foul and giving Tennessee a one point lead at 60 to 59. The crowd will get on him again. Nix hits two for two. 26 points for Dyron Nix tonight. 61 59. Tennessee leading by two. 255 to play in the game. And Vernon Maxwell has not scored in the second half. He loses the basketball. Tennessee comes up with it with Housley. Vernon trying to do a little bit of everything right now for Florida, and it ends up being a costly turnover. Tennessee up by two at 2.40 to go. I think Florida would be happy if Vernon Maxwell just did a little bit of something here in the second half. He has not scored, but Chapman strips it away from Lockhart. Maxwell comes up with it on the far end, and we'll have a foul on Ian Lockhart as they went for the basketball, and Maxwell will go to the line for a one and one. Now, you want to talk about clutch free throws. Vernon Maxwell, in the last three minutes of games this year, is money in the bank from the free throw line. 27 out of 30, 90% from the stripe in the last three minutes. And considering he has not scored in the second half, these are big free throws for him and for the Gator team. They trail by two. Maxwell in and out. Knicks rebounds, and Tennessee has the ball. 2.24 to play. They lead by a two. This would be an upset of major proportions in the SEC if Tennessee can pull it off here in the O'Connell Center tonight. Now Tennessee slowing it down, forcing Florida to come out and force the action. Chapman tight on Knicks. Maxwell helping out. Knicks walked. They're going to call him for an offensive foul. Livingston Chapman is very excited about the call. Nick's his third foul. Chapman had a position. Nick's made the turn to the basket. Livingston was set. The body contact made. And with two minutes to go, the Gators down by a bucket. And Don DeVoe wants a timeout, but he doesn't get it before Florida gets the ball inbounds. Florida with a chance to tie it or take the lead if they can spring a three. Inside to Shinsis. He's taking charge here in the second half. Just hasn't been able to get the shots to go. Chapman leans in and gets the roll. The Great crowd will tell you that one Chapman. was good. Great Sorry, move by Chapman, taking the ball to the basket, getting the bucket that Florida needs, all tied up. And Don DeVoe says, let's talk this one over now as we head down the stretch. With 1.32 to go, we're all even at 61. So DeVoe finally gets his time out, but not before. Florida ties it at 61 on a nice move by Chapman. A reminder again, our game next week, next Wednesday night, Vanderbilt at Florida. If Florida can pull this one off here tonight, they have the weekend off. They would still be in the Southeastern Conference race along with Kentucky, Vanderbilt, LSU, and on the outside chance, perhaps the Auburn Tigers, who have six losses. They'd be kind of a long shot to win it, but they could make things ugly for Florida down the stretch. Right now, tied at 61, Tennessee with the basketball. And I'm sure Dondebo's playing right now, trying to chew some time off the clock. 
They've got possession of the ball. Let Florida come out and play the tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Tennessee really has controlled this second half. Florida led by 9, 39, 30 at the break. And Tennessee's had their way. Good tough man-to-man -man defense. And Florida really, for the last five minutes, had to play catch-up to Tennessee. Who's controlled the momentum. Right now, though, all even at 61, thanks to Livingston Chapman with a big bucket inside the paint. Florida seemingly has to get the ball inside because the outside shots are just not falling. Norm Sloan looks down at the other end of the court where the Volunteers will bring the ball inbounds. Florida trying to press. They're going to run some clock. Minute 26 to play. We're tied at 61. The crowd chanting defense. Good defense by Montgomery on Bell. They get it to Roth, top of the key, and he'll kick it back out to Swearingen. 25 with a shot clock for Tennessee. They get Lockhart, spring him loose underneath off Chris Capers. And Lockhart puts Tennessee up 63-61 with a minute six to play in the game. Crunch time in the O'Connell Center. Underneath the Schintz is all alone for the layup. Great pass in front of Maxwell Schintz. It's wide open inside the basket. And he puts it in, tied at 63. 50 seconds to play now. They're going to be looking for Dyer and Nix. Livingston Chapman. Playing inside, Nix's shirt underneath. 40 seconds now. We're tied at 63. Roth tries to drive. Now he kicks it out to Nix, top of the key on the left side. Chapman guarding him. 16 on the shot clock. Lockhart with swarming Gators all over him. They try to get it to Nix. No good. Lockhart rebounds on the far side. And they call Florida's ball. Not exactly sure what happened underneath. The foul's going to be at Ian Lockhart. He got the rebound and came down with a swing and elbows. 19 seconds left, tie ball game, and Norm Sloan says, hey, let's take a timeout and talk about how he can win this thing. It looked like Ian Lockhart was going to put it back in with only 20 seconds to play and put Tennessee up by two and put all the pressure on Florida. Now Florida will have the ball with 19 seconds to play. The shot clock is off. Florida with a chance to win it. Now the pressure swings back to Tennessee. Norm Sloan right now can set himself a play far with a chance to win it. They have the ball. They can take his, the last shot if they want. No shot clock left. And now Don DeVoe is trying to figure out some strategy how to get a go-ahead basket. Now let's concentrate on making some defense right now for the Gators. And I guess at this point, Sloan goes to his hot man tonight, which could be a number of people. You can go to Dwayne Shensis inside. Livingston Chapman's had the hot hand. And Vernon Maxwell, the guy that normally would take that last second shot. The attendance tonight, 9,527, but at times tonight they have sounded more like 11 or 12,000, especially down the stretch here as Tennessee has made it a great game, and especially in the last seconds where Ian Lockhart gave up the basketball with a foul. So what Norm Sloan may do here, Mark, I'm not sure, he may bring the ball in bounds and call timeout again so they can set up a play from half court. But with 19 seconds of play and you're on your own home court, you have a natural advantage to begin with. He'll go with his five starters out on the court. Chapman, I would think Chapman would be the guy they'd go to. He's, he and Shinsis have been the big guns tonight. But Capers will go to the line to shoot the one and one. Capers, 32% from the line, but he's two for two tonight. That one misses everything in Roth rebounds. And now Tennessee has a chance to win it. Ten seconds left. Nine, eight. Five as Bell puts up the shot. It goes in. Three seconds ago, now two seconds, and Florida calls timeout. Is this an instant replay of what Tennessee had in Kentucky or what? Bell hit the shot to give them an upset win over the Wildcats last week. That time falling all over Florida, putting the shot up and in with three seconds to go. Now two seconds and Tennessee up 65-63. Almost identical of what Bell did to beat Kentucky. Falling down, just threw the ball up and finds the bottom of the net. And 
with two ticks to go. Tennessee on the verge of a big, big upset as far as the Southeastern Conference race goes. And Florida, as they say, will be kicking themselves all during this idle weekend that they have this weekend when they are off. If they let this one get away here at home before 9,200 fans came in only a half game out of first place in the conference, and if Tennessee, who was 6-8 and eight and in sixth place, knocks them off, with Vanderbilt coming in here next week, the road gets a whole lot tougher for Florida if they can't win here tonight. You take a look at Tennessee. Don Navo trying for career win number 300 tonight. It would probably be one of the sweetest victories he's had pulling off a, a big, big upset. He hasn't had much success against Florida in recent years, especially here in this building. So to, to win number 300 and possibly knock Florida out of the race here in Gainesville tonight would have to be sweet. There's the man who hit the shot, Greg Bell. The SEC Rookie of the Week last week for his play against Kentucky. The upset win and against Auburn. Florida, a long way to go and a short time to get there. Two seconds. McClary will inbounds with Roth in his face. Crowd on its feet. Long pass for McClary. Chapman puts it up. It doesn't go. Tennessee wins it. 65-63. Tough shot for Chapman. And the Gators fall to Tennessee tonight. 65-63. Kenny McClary with a desperation pass goes down and Livingston Chapman shot is off and a very happy Tennessee squad celebrates a big, big victory because what it does for Tennessee, not only career win number 300 for Don DeVoe, the Vols now go to 14 and 10 and 7 and 8 as far as the conference goes and a lot of momentum for them when you head into the Southeastern Conference Tournament. And they avenge a 20-point loss to these Gators in Knoxville a month ago. For Florida on the other side, dejection as you saw them as they walked off the court. Now with six losses in the conference, they're pretty much, you'd have to say, would need a lot of help and maybe a couple miracles and uh, maybe some minor automobile accidents to really to win the Southeastern Conference. Things become very tough now. The Vanderbilt game next Wednesday night in Alabama and then the season ending game at LSU, but the Gators now dropping to nine and six in the conference. A very tough loss for a Florida basketball team that jumped back into the SEC race. So Florida loses tonight 65-63 in front of 9,200 who slowly file out of the O'Connell Center. And it was a second half charge led by Dyron Nix of Tennessee, the leading scorer in the conference. Unofficially, we had him with 26 points on the night. But it was Greg Bell, the freshman from London, West Virginia, who twice in the span of a week has knocked off two of the Giants in the Southeastern Conference with last second shots. And Tennessee goes to 14 and 10, seven and eight in the conference. Florida loses a chance to win their 20th game of the year. They'll have to wait another week before Vanderbilt here to have a chance to do it again. Nine and six now in the conference for Florida. Kentucky playing tonight, a play this weekend, and Vanderbilt coming in. The road ahead looks very tough for Florida. Tonight's replay of the Florida-Tennessee game has been a presentation of Cox Cable 8 Sports. Our producer is Fred Maria, our director Bob D'Alessio. Thanks to Mark Daniels and our Cable 8 Sports crew. They do a great job. Until next week, when the Vanderbilt Commodores and Will Purdue and company come in, this is Ken Tomash for Mark Daniels saying so long. We'll see you next week. Again, the final. Tennessee 65, Florida 63.